the question you keep asking, how do I relate with God? My question to you is, how do you relate with God if you don't know the Bible? If you don't read the Bible, how do you relate with you? You can't. You don't have His Word. You don't understand His Word. You can't. God is not going to speak to you. Michelle, wake up. Wake up. I've got something to tell you. That's not going to happen, okay? So you got to get up. And you did. So that's a good start. Okay? Hi, Grace. You got left behind by your friends. And I asked them where you were. And they said, I don't know. The whole church is small. You, yeah, I don't. Somewhere in the church. Okay? You still got lessons to learn about friendship, huh? <laughs> Okay, well, let's read, read, read uh, the, the scriptures again. I think this is wonderful. But I've read it already. Well, read it again. Is it clearer? Do you now read it with a bit more understanding? Okay, first morning you read it. You had no idea what it means. Okay, uh, second morning, I, I hope you read it. Okay, at least I know what the word is. What is the word? Who is the word? The word is a reference to Jesus. He is called the word, the logos, the word. Right? And the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. So when God created the heavens and the earth, who was there? If you go back to Genesis, it just says God. Right? And then it also mentioned the Spirit. So who was that? Who created? Who is creator? And we note God. Right? But then as we read the Scriptures, revealed God, Father. There's three persons. Not three, three gods, okay? One God, three persons. We, the Holy Spirit is mentioned and the Spirit was there. Now, the third pun's uh, the, the, right? Third one, not mentioned. John mentions it insightfully. So it was reviewed. The Bible is written progressively. We call this progressive revelation. It was not revealed in one shot. What we have is the complete. Okay? Complete information, complete knowledge about God and His plans for the whole world and beyond. Eternity. Okay? So beginning, revelation, Genesis to revelation and beyond. So it to me is an exciting, most exciting book. Did you know there are manuscripts all over? If, if someone was to, this would be a hideous thing to do, a very evil thing to do, destroy all the Bible in the world. If someone did, like all the English Bible, you destroy it all, right? Or all the other language. You can reconstruct the Bible all over again with the Greek manuscript and the Hebrew manuscript all over the place which is to me absolutely amazing. Right? How God has literally preserved His Word. There will have been scholars who say, how do we know the Old Testament is, is true? It's been passed down like that. It must be changed until they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. And they begin to realize what was passed down and preserved was exactly the same. Maybe a few typos here and there. Right? The Dead Sea Scrolls. You ever heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls? Never heard. Okay. All right. The Dead Sea, you see, <clears throat> you will come across this word called scribes. In the early days, there's no printer. How do, well, Joanne, Joanna Go is a scribe. You know, beautiful handwritings and all. And she's just, well, she's not really a scribe. 
But a scribe is one who is. His work is to write, copy the Bible in the, in the Hebrew language, and then he will copy script. They're also teachers, right? Word for word, and they do it very carefully. This is their regard for the Word of God. If they make a mistake somewhere, they will literally... Now, in the past, there is no chapters and verses, okay? It's just you keep on writing. And I've seen some of those things. I'm like, how, how, do you, how do you find which chapter, which verse? There's no such thing. Chapters and verses came later on. Okay? And so they will record and copy Genesis 1 in the beginning. God made the heavens and the earth, right? And all that, and keep on going. Now, if they were to add an extra thing there, which is not supposed to be there, they will take the scroll, roll it up. You, you cannot scrunch it up and throw it away. This is, this is God's holy word. You don't do things. They, such was their regard for the scriptures. This is God's word. They will roll it up, put it in an urn, and then put it somewhere. So they discover all these manuscripts because there's so many mistakes. <laughs> right? Such is the mistakes. But they were little mistakes. It's not like they changed the word. It's just a dot here, extra thing there, and you know, maybe the, tired, the, the scribe was so tired because the light, oh, they had a light, and then he, oh dear. Can you imagine Genesis, how many chapters? And on the last part, you, an extra, what do you do? God have mercy on me. Wrote it up, give me strength, do it again. And that's how the scribes were trained. Accuracy. Right? Just to let you know how the Word of God was preserved in those days. Now, Jesus is called the Word. This is a reference to the Son of God, the Word. And so John, how does he understand? Who is Jesus? He is none other than he shares in what we call the Godhead. He is co-creator with God. So can we say that the Holy Spirit is creator too? Yes. If the Son of God, was He there? Did He create it? Yes. You're going to see this in Paul's writing. The world was created through Him. In Him. For Him. This is the power of the Lord. This is why the power is not in His siblings. Because His siblings is not God. Okay, you've got to understand this. Your question, tell me how little you know about actually the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So you don't understand that He is God. He is God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, in God's great plan, profound plan for the salvation of the world, He sent His Son into the world. This is why John said, and the Word became flesh. And we celebrate that every Christmas. We call it the incarnation. Okay, you're learning big words here. This is theological words. In theology, we call this the Trinity. Right? How do I explain it? Very hard to explain it. It just is. Right? How do you explain the incarnation? It just is. Can science prove it? Believe me, science cannot prove a lot of things. Okay? Science cannot prove why this person, so short, falls in love with this person, so tall. Prove that to be. It's just... What is that? That's almost illogical. Hello. Every time you got to look up, wow, you look up to me. Yes, literally. There's lots of things science cannot prove. Science can prove lots of things, yes, but there are lots of things science cannot prove. Science cannot prove why on earth the, you know, this small little creature, right, 
with such small wings can fly so fast. Can you see the hummingbird? You know what a hummingbird is. Right? Please tell me you at least know what a hummingbird is. Otherwise, I don't know what you're learning. In, it's, you know, they just cannot figure out the speed and you, you need the big wingspan for flight. This fella has small, small wings. Okay? I, I grew up in Christmas Island where the bird, there's a bird called, it's a black bird called the frigate bird. It is huge wingspans. Big fellows. They, their wings are so big. This guy, if he lands on the ground, he cannot take off. He, they, they have to land on cliffs because they literally have to throw themselves off and And so there are some that will, uh, and when I was a kid, they, they, I tried to rescue them, but they are aggressive guys, right? Because they fall down, I'm trying to bring them back. My house is near the National Park Ranger, and I'm good friends with the National Park Rangers. We used to bring them there. We used to feed these birds. Take, and he used to, uh, you know, we throw the fish up in the air, and they will come. How do you attract them? Wear what Michelle wears. Their favorite color is red. Okay, so if you ever go to Christmas Island and you wear what you do, they're going to love you <laughs> by swooping at you because the red is the mating call. <laughs> you uh, attract a lot of, oh, hello, Michelle. <laughs> and everybody will be, oh, they will, why are these birds circling around me? So we always tell tourists, okay, you uh, don't wear red all completely. And especially if these birds are flying around, they will come at you. They will think you are the, wow, hello, you're interested in me. So we used to feed them. We used to, these guys are huge. You know, it's amazing. God's creation is just so amazing. When we talk about the world in the creation, in the natural world, it just reflects the wisdom the power, the majesty of God. Are there scientists that are Christian? Yes, they make them even more. They love it even more. To them, we discover how amazing God is as a creator. There's things that a true scientist say, they just cannot figure it out. How can it? It's just so amazing. Now, they, they, one, one particular group of scientists, they researched the octo octopus and they said, the octopus are aliens. Just because they look like aliens, that doesn't mean they're aliens. Because in their RNA, they are inside their code, they have something that is so advanced, they can edit their own thing. Change. And they can adapt to different climates, different everything. I thought that was pretty amazing. He says, this is too advanced for a creature like that. You are telling the octopus what it cannot be. Why do the octopus it can slap you? It will. <laughs> God, maybe God created just to show you evolution. Wow, you know, the evolution, you've got to begin here. Simple, it becomes more complex. The octopus is more advanced and complicated than human being inside them. And so they said, this, the octopus cannot be from this world. What? You know, they are more crazy than anything else. Maybe some alien, now this is their theory, some alien came and planted them, and then that's how they came. Wow. See, there are people, they, they cannot understand it, but they refuse to acknowledge God. They refuse to say there is a God. Otherwise, you see, it's so easy. The, the answer to everything is God. It's not. Even though you acknowledge God, it doesn't mean life is easy. Answers are easy. But it now makes sense. You, you see this? So, John is not a scientist. John was not a philosopher. But you know, this is his faith and knowledge and understanding. In the beginning was the Word. The Creator God, 
Who is Jesus? And this is his favorite topic throughout this whole, all the chapters. Jesus. One author, he's a, he wrote the book of Hebrews, and he says, he's not an original disciple, and he says, but we see Jesus. What do we, how can we actually see Jesus with eyes of faith? Meaning, can we understand him? Can we receive him? See, this is where he says, all things were made through him. Who's him? He's talking about Jesus. And without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life. Does it make sense now? See, we've got to read the Bible and say, well, can I understand this? And the life was the light of man. The light shines in the darkness, and darkness did not comprehend. Right? So I, I listen to the way you read the Bible, and I, where, where, do you, where do you grasp the meaning or not? You cannot read it. This is, to me, this is exciting to read it and say, wow. Okay? And so he says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness. Now, this is John the Baptist, bore witness of the light. So God sends messengers, witnesses to point people, this Jesus is who he is. So Jesus did not come into the world and say, I am the Son of God alone. A lot of people, a lot of past um, said that I'm the Messiah. Jesus had what you, we call others, witnesses, pointing, this is the Messiah. Right? So this is going to make him stand out different from the rest. Now, we read that all through him might believe. He was not that light, referring to John the Baptist, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That light. Not just any light. This is the light. Right? Different from our light. We, we can say we have received the light of the Lord, but we are certainly not the light. John was light. In the sense that, what does light represent? You switch off all the light, you can't see. No light, darkness. But when there's light, now I can see, I can read, I can understand. That's what light represents. Wisdom, understanding, knowledge. Can you know God? You need His light. Right? Without this light, I, I, I can read, I, I can't understand. You need that light. Now, verse 9. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him. Still talking about Jesus. The world did not know him. Right? Those who do not, uh, they did not know him. Why? Because they did not receive him. And that is what we talked about, right? Have we received the Lord? Have we received the Lord? This is what faith is. You ask, how do I, how do I really believe? How do I know I have genuine faith? Right? What is this genuine faith? You receive the Lord. First, you've got to know who He is. God, Son of God, Creator God. If you have zero information about knowledge about Him, I just heard, yeah, He's Jesus. But I'm not sure. Does His, does his brother also got power? Oh, you don't know the Lord. Please. First, he, he didn't tell people to receive without knowing. No, then receive. Faith is not blind. We... No, no, we understand Him. You know what? We receive Him. He has come to us. If someone comes to you, and this is a gift from God, what do you do? 
you recognize it, you understand it, you receive Him. That's what faith is. Okay? And if you receive the Lord, what happens? Now, we go on further. Okay? Of course, this part is the testimony. He gave the right to, to become children of God to those who believe in His name. Right? His name, Son of God. His name, the Christ. So you understand who Jesus is. You believed in it, then you become born, not of blood, not of the will of man, not of the will of God, but of God. You are, what John keeps saying, you're born of God. God will create in you a new life. Right? That's what it is. Your part is to receive. And if you do this, God will do something and He will create a new life inside you. You are born of God. Your identity, I am a child of God. You know, you live with a greater sense of identity. How do children of God live? They will focus differently. See, John's testimony. Now, we have John as the writer. This he switches now and he says, verse 14, the word became flesh, right? And dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten, of the Father, full of grace and truth. He's the only begotten, meaning he's the Son of God. The only begotten. Right? We beheld His glory. Once upon a time, you used to focus on yourself. You used to focus on the world. You used to focus on that. When you come to faith in the Lord Jesus, your focus becomes Him. That's John. Their focus has changed. You know what? You focus on Him. That's how you know you are truly a child of God. You know what? You wake up in the morning, you know, this is how you begin the day. This is how I begin the day. One, my identity, I'm a child of God. Two, I'm going to begin the day focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's my focus, not on the world. I learn to focus on the Lord, right? That's my focus. He's my Savior. He's the one who created new life in me. Remember, creator? He creates now a new life in me. In him is life, light. He creates new life in me. My focus is Jesus. You know what? I want to do my best for the Lord this day. I want to live well for the Lord. I want to honor the Lord who has given me life. That's how I begin every day. My identity I'm a child of God, not a child of the world. Certainly not a child of the evil one. Child of God. My focus, Jesus. Now, you'll go on further. This is John's testimony. And then he say, um, verse 16, and of his fullness we have all received. This is your next word, fullness. Fullness of what? We have received. From Jesus, fullness, grace for grace. Wow. Fullness of grace. The grace that saved me, touched by His grace. Here am I, sinful. Here am I, weak. Here am I, you know, unable to do much. And yet, here is the Lord in His grace, in His love, in His kindness, He receives me. Grace for salvation. Grace to be saved. Grace to have a new life. It's a call, a gift. You didn't pay for it. You didn't work for it. There's nothing you can do to ever earn His love. He gave it to you. Do you understand grace? A lot of time, we don't understand grace. What must I do? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to go out of hand, I'm going to change my life. 
without the Lord's grace, you will fail. We do it because we have received grace. We do it because, you know what, I have been deeply touched by God's grace. And every day I can begin, you know what, this is, this is my identity. This is my faith. I'm a child of God. This is my focus, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I may have a full day ahead. I may have many challenges that I need to face. I can face it with the fullness of God's grace. Grace and strength goes together. This is what I have received. See, this is how I can begin the day. With gladness, with confidence, with courage. Not with, oh, the struggle is real. That to me is, why? why? Begin the day strong. This is the breakfast for heroes, conquerors. Wow, this is, we begin the day overcomer. And the day hasn't even begun yet. Okay? Oh, wow, I actually begin earlier than this. This is mid-morning. Right? Usually already done exercise. Because this is not usual when camp. But you know how wonderful it is to begin. And then you can, the whole day, have that strength, have that focus. Not, no need to be distracted. I want to live, I want to live well for my Jesus. You know what I have. Can I do this? Will I fail? No. You have fullness of grace. How, how, unless you don't know. Unless you don't, don't have the Lord. You have all this focus. Okay? Well, I, I want to really know God. What shall I do? Focus on the Lord now. This is one last bit here. Verse 17, the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Now, Moses was a great teacher of God. He wrote five books in the Bible, Genesis to Deuteronomy. He was truly a, hailed as a prophet sent from God, a great teacher. Compare Jesus with Moses. Okay? You cannot hold a candle to Jesus. Okay, and this is what it is. This is a great... Th Everybody knows Moses in those days. But this is Jesus, okay? No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Now, this word declared Him is... What is this word? You see, there are teachers who teach by... Okay, just memorize this. We call this rote learning. They don't really teach. I had teachers like that. It's just really difficult. They are not exciting. They are... I said, why are you... Re They're basically reading the lecture notes to us, word by word. <sighs> Boring like anything. I mean, it's just... They're not explaining anything. They just say, okay, this is... And they speak like monotone. Yeah, 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 yeah. We dead yet, right? Now, there are teachers that explain things with skill. And it takes tremendous skill to teach and explain things. This word declare. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is not just declare as in, I'm just going to announce or proclaim. This word declare is where we get the word exegit. What is exegit? See, you're learning lots of big words today or the word expound. A person that can exegete is you have to be so close to God to know the deep knowledge of God and explain this knowledge with full authority and power and confidence and courage. Hence, Jesus was as close to God as the bosom of the Father. It would tell you closeness. This is the work we do as pastors in the ITC family. We exegete the Word of God. We don't just declare. This is where you, you've been spending three mornings reading just one John, you know. 
and you probably have not seen this before. This is exegete. You expound. This is what Jesus taught his disciples to do. But comparing to Jesus, no one can do it as skilled as him. He truly is the greatest teacher. Exegete, closeness, deep knowledge that you have of God and you explain him. It can be translated as he explained God. Probably better word than declare God because the word explain is also weak, but the actual word is the word exegesis or exegete or expound. You've heard of the word expound? You expound something. You know this knowledge so well, it's at the back of your hand that you can explain its every detail. That is exegete. Very few teachers can do that. Right? Now, I have an economic teacher. He will teach us and he will say, okay, turn to page 150, second paragraph, and he will recite it. He doesn't even look at the book. He sits there and talks to us and explains things from it without looking. I mean, he's not even reading. How can he do it? My economic teacher wrote the economic book. It's his book. That's why he knows it so well. He's the author. Jesus is the word. You understand? You want to know the Lord? You want to know God? You want to relate with God? Focus on the Lord Jesus. There's so much to learn about. The gospel, many four gospels. Read. You like to read? Read. But ask, how can, help me to read. But you need the Lord to give you light. You need other people who know the Lord to help you. They are the witnesses. Right? And every morning you can begin. Okay, so you can read John 1 again. At least you can focus. Okay, yeah, I can, I can begin this day like this. With faith with focus, with fullness. Okay? While we pray together. Our Father, we pray as we spend one last day at the youth camp. We thank you for the many lessons that we can learn. Help us to develop a high interest to read the scriptures, to discover you, to discover the reality of faith to receive it, experience its power in our life for every day. We thank you that we can begin the day focusing on you. We ask that you would bless us as we begin this day together shortly. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, one last day. Enjoy it. Make the most out of it.